Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, this is Adult Films Exposed. In-depth discussion and interviews with members of the adult film industry. Happy Hump Day and welcome to a brand new episode of Adult Films Exposed. I am here with an amazing woman. I'm here with Sasha Hart. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. No um, problem. Before we begin, guys, I'm your host, Yael Teagle. Make sure you check out Adult Films Exposed on Twitter at AFXPOSED. That's AFXPOSED. Also, if you have not yet, go onto iTunes, rate and review us. You will get a shout out right here on the air if you rate and review us and subscribe on YouTube. Those are the challenges for the next week. Do all that. Um, let's talk about you, Sasha. All right. I want to start with how you got into the industry. I know that you were a dancer and then you did some photos and then you started doing some film under the name Sabrina Star. Oh my gosh, yes. Tell yes, us how we got there. Um, I'm going to take a flashback to everyone that uh, knows the social networking. Yeah. Um, I was contacted on MySpace. Interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, before Facebook was cool. Right. Yeah. I was doing, like you said, I danced for roughly, I, I'm i still um, unsure on the exact amount of time. Mm -hmm. It could have been like four months, maybe possibly six months, okay. maybe. Uh, being 18, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> right. Um, I was basically dancing and I wanted to uh, enter into Playboy, actually. Mm -hmm. So I was taking uh, photos and I think those photos are actually still on the MySpace account. Do you remember your MySpace name? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I think it's my legal name. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, which unfortunately porn wiki kind of blew out of the water. Yeah. So it's not a secret what my legal name is. Right. So. Uh, everyone pretty much knows it. Yeah. Uh, I won't say it on air, but if you search my name, yeah. it is there. <laughs> right. Because uh, Porn Wiki wasn't cool about that. But um, yeah, I basically got into dancing mm -hmm. and I was taking these photos because this creepy old man, man named Daryl with this white hair, like I'll never forget him. He had white hair up to here and it was balding. Like, okay. it reminded me of a Q-tip. <laughs> it did. It reminded me straight up like a Q-tip. All right. I have that image in my head yes. now. <laughs> and he told me, like, he would come in with these shorts that were, like, jogging shorts, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, he didn't wear underwear under them. Yeah. And uh, this T-shirt. And he told me, like, you should really submit for, like, Playboy. And I didn't think porn at that time. Right. I was not thinking porn. I was not thinking anything other than playboy mm -hmm. and mainstream that's it okay so he brought me in to like do these really tacky tacky i mean i really cannot express tacky okay like you know roll down the paper <laughs> photo shoot okay <laughs> and uh he had me sit on a chair mm -hmm. with like five different old guys taking pictures of me <laughs> At 18, yeah. Okay. Tacky and creepy mm -hmm. slash creepy. Yeah. Do not, I do not recommend any girl doing that. But they each Noted. paid, <laughs> they each paid me like 50, 60 bucks each. Yeah. So um, they didn't go anywhere, by the way, I think other than in each one of their spank banks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But from that, mm -hmm. I met a guy named Terry on Model Mayhem, and he actually was a legit photographer. And okay. he took like really good photos of me with me um, in like this crop top, mm -hmm. fully nude in this really pretty chair with this backlit um, backdrop. Mm -hmm. And then uh, pearls and I loaded them on my MySpace, yeah. not thinking anything of it. Like Playboy wasn't gonna do anything with them. I did the submission, but yeah. never heard anything. Yeah. You know, I didn't know how to do anything with it. Right. And at the time, I only had my one tattoo, the cherries, mm -hmm. if anyone knows. Oh, wait, and my back tattoo. My noted, <laughs> someone should have told me never get. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, 
I was contacted by my first agency, which was called Alternative Modeling. Yeah. Okay. Alternative modeling, meaning you don't do porn. <laughs> okay. That was the catch. Like, um, they were basically located out of Florida. And they told me, like, we will pay for your ticket. We will fly you out here. And at the time, there was no such thing as, like, you can only do girl, girl. Mm -hmm. And here I am, like, you pay for my ticket? You'll fly me out to Florida? Like, I'm from Kentucky, small town. Yeah. Like, we don't even make it on the map. <laughs> and I'm all, you'll do what? And I just have to do what? So I get out there, and they doll me up, and they take my pictures, and all of a sudden, like, they're like, okay, have you ever thought, like, all you got to do is get tested and, like, all you got to do is have sex with guys. Now, my agent, Eli, my first one ever, mm -hmm. he's like, aren't you just having sex with guys for free? And I'm all, at 18, going, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, now, what if you were having sex with guys for money? And I'm all, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, what if you were having sex with guys, women, and yourself for money? And I'm all, <laughs> uh-huh. I was booked that day. Now, here's some messed up stuff. I wasn't tested my first shoot. That is messed up. That is some messed up shit. And since then, you, of course, get tested every yes. two weeks. My agent was wrong on that. Mm -hmm. But I was super lucky, and so was that male talent. And yeah. he, I don't even remember my first male talent. That's some fun shit. <laughs> Do you remember your first film? What it was called? Come Fiesta. I had to think about it. Come Fiesta. Okay. Um, since then, uh, I've actually tried to like bury Sabrina Star, <laughs> like bury her. My agent was not right in uh, picking a name that was already existent. Like another girl had my name, mm -hmm. and we both that well actually two girls had my name. How fucked up is that? Yeah, like two girls. Um, so it was really hard. Like, yes, I exceeded both their works. Right. One was not even in porn. She was just a shoe model. She owned the website and mm. refused to even sell it. Yeah. And she didn't even update it, which was weird. I was like, dude, <laughs> you don't even update it. Yeah. But um, she refused to sell it. And the other one wasn't even in the industry anymore. Yeah. But um, soon after, I went into just doing girl, girl. And I only did boy, girl, maybe four to six months just like dancing wow. so they just kept regenerating my boy girl <laughs> it was kind of like yeah. well then didn't realize i was that good at it <laughs> but you know it worked and yeah. it was kind of a, a good ride at being sabrina star <laughs> yeah well what made you switch to doing just girl girl or predominantly girl girl um mainly i've had a lot of fans ask me that too mm -hmm. Um, there were a number of reasons. Uh, one of them was a lot of male talent that I worked with were rough with me when I first started. Um, I have some male talent that I can speak very highly of. And those are the ones that have been around for eons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate to make them sound old, but they're not old. Um, no, but they've they, just been yes, successful. Veterans. Yes. Yes. Veterans. <laughs> um, and then there's the ones that I crossed paths with, that there were, there is probably one scene mm -hmm. that my fans will talk about um, that I was treated really badly. And it was noted that I was treated really badly in the scene. And it that was probably one of the scenes that made me say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like, girls shouldn't be treated badly. And there's some male talent that feel like they should kind of treat the girls yeah. like crap okay. and my body i don't think is it's built for that either i'm really tiny down there yeah. and <laughs> I mean, you're, really, you're really tiny everywhere yeah. you're a very small person <laughs> well i got 
speed up down there a lot because of that. Like they're they're large and well endowed, and mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, like my body took a lot of beatings right. from that. Like there, I would get torn, and you know, it just it just wasn't good for me. Mm-hmm. So. I just found that it was a lot easier to nix the boy girl. And also I found um, having a personal life was harder for me. Yeah. I really found that, you know, it took a toll on my psyche. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I'm definitely someone that likes to have a companion yeah. in my personal life. If I wanted to, or even have a possibility of having like a child or a a potential mate Mm -hmm. each time I would try to have one um I found that if I was doing boy girl the mates that I would pick would be really weird (laughs) I mean okay they would um want to bring males into my personal life um and they they would tend to be male talent or they would offer it and I don't like that I like having to have a personal life Mm -hmm. And, or they would assume that I was different. Like in my personal life, I was the same way as my porn. And I'm not. In my personal life, I'm a go out to eat or snuggle at home. And while doing boy girl, obviously like, I like my kinky stuff, Mm -hmm. but I've always said that my personal life is more interesting to videotape. (laughs) And they would ruin it for me if I was doing, you know, boy, girl. And it just, they would, they'd kill it. (laughs) Where if I'm saying I'm doing girl, girl, it's a lot easier. Yeah. It it just seems a lot easier to date. Yeah. And I mean, your body is your instrument. This is what you're using to make, you know, your business and your your career. You need to take care of it. Exactly. That's what matters. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like it a lot better when I can do, uh, you know, I just added on girl, girl, anal. So I like it a lot better when I can go home and be like, I just had this girl choke me out. Now I want you to do it. Like, it's (laughs) a lot better. It's so much better. Yeah. I feel like guys like it when, you know, you can come home and you can say, hey, you know, some some guy wasn't with me, some Mm -hmm. stranger, you know. Uh, Some guys are really okay with their masculinity and other guys aren't. Yeah, it happens. I don't want to deal with uh, some guy's drama just because they're not okay with what they're packing. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be surprised. I'll be honest, I get with crazy people. I do. I attract the crazy ones. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm crazy. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I'm still deciding if I'm crazy. Yeah. (laughs) The jury's still out. (laughs) Do you think you have more male fans or female fans? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Um, I'm going to go out on the limb and say it might be equal. Okay. Um, Because I'm pretty interactive with my fans. Yeah, I've seen you yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> you are very much involved. I, I try to talk to them all. Um, even I just started my Instagram again because they deleted me because they're haters yeah. and they're Nazis on there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying the Tumblr thing, which I'll be honest, if anyone's listening to this, I don't understand it. I really don't. <laughs> I don't get it. And I probably never will. So if you're trying to get me to understand it, I don't. Um, <laughs> Someone's going to send you like instructions <laughs> now. Like This there, is how you do it. There's a fan um, named Kenny who is... Thank goodness for him because he tries to explain everything to me. <laughs> when I don't understand it, he sends me instructions. Well, thank you, Kenny. Yes, he's really um, diligent on yeah. that, uh, but I still don't understand it. Yeah. So I literally just started it a week ago. Uh, same with my MeWe. I don't understand uh, fully how to uh, interact. I just know how to update my videos okay. so nick from snap girls is really diligent on helping me with that <laughs> i am uh electronically inept i should have been born like eons back yeah. in caveman days <laughs> but as far as like male and female mm-hmm. i think they might be about equal i would even say um couples wise i think they joined together and oh. married couples too i think they would joined together i don't think there's one or the other that likes me more that's awesome because um guys 
I'm like a wingman. Like, yeah. I think like a guy. I don't know. Um, I would say watch uh, my evil angel stuff, and I am like a smut, crazy, like get down dirty girl. Mm -hmm. So I have lines that totally just appeal to men and would not be what I would recommend for women. Mm -hmm. And then I have, if you are a lesbian, like straight bona fide, you know that you are yeah. like a butch lesbian, mm -hmm. I would recommend my girl's way sharing the bed. You know, I went straight there and I think that would be more for them. Like mm -hmm. I appeal towards the females that know what being a lesbian is. Like mm -hmm. I think I hit like where things that they don't get to fully express. Yeah. And then Shyla hit, you know, well, I don't fully understand what being a lesbian is. So we're doing a sequel now. Yeah. And then, you know, I think even these, mm -hmm. you know, the fetish stuff hits all the girl stuff, the kinky things yeah. that we like. Yeah. And then, you know, the lesbian bush stuff, that's all girls. We smell the hair that lets pheromones. So yeah. I would say... You know, there's a line of everything that I've been in, mm -hmm. even with uh, Wicked and the passion stuff I just shot, yeah. I'm sensual and sexy. That would probably be for couples yeah. even. So there's something out there for every every single person, awesome. guys, girls, couples, anything. Well, let's talk about lesbian bush worship. We have a DVD here. Um, let's it's all about the bush. Let's talk about this. So you directed this film. Yes. Um, and wrote it. And wrote it. So you you recently went into directing, correct? Yes. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to start being a little more behind the camera as well? Um, that's a funny story. I walked into a casting <laughs> with Dion at Philly. I literally just walked in and was like, I'm here and just want to shoot for Philly. And he offered me a directing gig. Okay. <laughs> So it wasn't, it wasn't like, like you were like, I need to do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I feel like I need, it's like a journey. Yeah. It was like, he wanted to give me a chance. Mm -hmm. And these are just two of my films. I've shot incest. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went there too. Um, and it just has stuck. Mm -hmm. I helped write uh, Hustler's uh, Fast and Furious Triple X, and I've helped um, Andre Madness write as well. Um, I've just kind of had my hands in a little bit of everything. Yeah. But these are probably my babies, just because I've had the pleasure of working with girls that just, I mean, not a lot of girls have bush, and I feel like, that's something that like now girls are like, okay, I'm gonna try and grow a bush for work. Mm -hmm. But there are girls that have just had hair. Like yeah. I have a full blown bush. And then there's sometimes that I've showed up on set and they're like, holy shit, what is that? <laughs> like I put googly eyes in um, at Digital Playground <laughs> and made it look like an animal and sent it to my agents. And they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, these are girls, this whole movie has girls that have just had a bush. Mm -hmm. And I personally think that's sexy. Like, yeah. this showcases them. It it just, they love it. They, this whole movie is about tugging the bush, smelling the bush, playing with the bush, you know, through the panties, in the shower. These girls didn't grow this. This was booked mm -hmm. literally within a week. So, yeah. you know, these are girls that are all natural <laughs> so when you have a film like this which is a special you're looking for a specialized type of girl yeah do you feel like it's hard to find because the industry has this like requirement kind of that yeah. women are bare um i searched for them that's for sure yeah i mean I, we don't have that requirement this is something that girls choose to do okay and I don't understand it even. Like, the hair is supposed to be there. Like, yeah. when did we become, I read an article even, like, when did we become when bear became in? Like, little girls are bear. Mm -hmm. When did women become 
hey, I should just shave it all off. Yeah. Like, I understand that somewhere along the way, men started saying, okay, this is in, take all the hair off. Okay, maybe I'll have a landing strip. Mm-hmm. Like, over time, it became something new. Yeah. But hair is now coming back. And the, the reason why all the girls now are trying to grow some type of hair is for work. Like, wow. but then you have these girls, like, I think this one is, um, what's her name? <laughs> the fuck is her name? <laughs> oh, I can't even remember her name. Willow Hayes. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I only saw her vagina. Just so everyone knows, I wasn't staring at her face. I was just staring at the crotch. That was not, I wasn't, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just a crotch right. shot. Uh, Willow Hayes shoots from a site ATK has. This girl is just full blown, like all into it. Mm-hmm. She has pit hair. Okay. I mean, it takes a lot to just show off like what you naturally have. Mm-hmm. And that's normal. Yeah. And then you have girls that just, I don't want any hair. And then Ella, Ella grows a full bush. I mean, just all the time. It's just gorgeous. And. I mean, these girls, like, that's Marie, too. She always has a bush. Mm -hmm. But there's different types of bush. So you have to understand that. Like, I personally like these. Like, the way that she has them, everyone Mm -hmm. has it not covering their lips. Like, that's nice. When you got it all the way, like, all over your lips, and then I'm, like, flossing with your pubes, that's not hot. I'm choking on your pubes. That... I've had that. It's it's not hot. Okay. <laughs> like, All right, good to know. Yeah, it's not hot. Okay, ladies, don't do that to your guys. Don't do it to your girlfriends. It's not hot. Noted. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about um, this film we have here. What is this one? Tell us about it. That is Hustler's Oil. Okay. <laughs> and you told me something happened to you in this. Oh yes. In this film. I received a number of bruises in that one, a busted lip, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, a, a, a cut on my pussy from teeth. Okay. Why is that? Was that, that was not intentional, <laughs> no, I'm assuming. No, no, no. So why did that happen? Well, if you turn it around, mm-hmm. and not the big picture, the little tiny ones show a lot of wrestling. Okay. So in that, in our scene, I'm not 100% sure on the other ones. I'm sure that they had different plots. Mm -hmm. In our scene, I worked with Leah Lore. So basically the plot was, you know, we're at a bar, she walks in, we're just talking. And then they had filled this big pit. Uh, Picture wrestling, like mud wrestling, picture that. But without the mud, Mm -hmm. picture it more like oil, like baby oil. I think it was baby oil, okay. actually. Uh, they filled it with a lot of it. And then us being in a bathing suit. Mm-hmm. We had to rip the bathing suits off and do a girl-girl in the midst of fighting each other. Okay. Now, imagine how hard that's got to be Yeah. when you're in the midst of just tossing each other. And we are actually fighting each other, mm-hmm. but trying not to hurt each other. Mm-hmm in the same way yeah so imagine she's sitting on my face but so she's riding my face but i'm trying to fight her okay so (laughs) if she's riding my face and my teeth are you know yeah yeah. so there was blood and bust lips and okay (laughs) i think um i want to say yeah she was somewhere from the south and I'm from the South. So something that was even more funny, and it, and I totally remember this, is uh, Stuart and Drew had to like come up and make sure that we weren't heated mm-hmm. because we sounded heated because she was from some part um, of the South and I'm from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So the way that we were having our right. fake, com- our fake, you know, confrontation sounded mm-hmm. real. Like we yeah. were both coming at each other before the fight. <laughs> and then, you know, us yeah. fighting, it it almost was like fight or flight. Yeah. Because she was bigger than me and way more than me. Yeah. So she was tossing me. And then it was like, <laughs> holy shit, like uh, I'm like 
dying here. Yeah. Like, they were all like, are you okay? Are you, I'm good. Are you okay? <laughs> I think I'm good. Dude, she's whooping my butt. <laughs> Screw this. <laughs> so it was like that. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the uh, video, it it's sexy, it's hot, and it's fun because you actually get to see the girls fight. Yeah. Um, now, I, I think there, there was one statement made to me before I shot it. Like a lot of girls don't want to come back because you get your skin broke out from obviously all, all the, the oil, oil yeah. and your hair. You, I think I actually loaded up some stills mm -hmm. on my Twitter. You have to go back in my feed, but my hair is just covered. Yeah. Like we look like lions. Right. Picture like a big lion in its mane <laughs> coming out of the water, just like, Oof. Yeah, <laughs> we are both just like running after each other. Like the pit is huge. Okay. So if I'm running like this, trying to get away from her, she's grabbing my foot. Like Ooh. you are not going anywhere. <laughs> and then she's doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, Where are you going? And then at the end, mm -hmm. it's you know we end it like <sighs> like we are out of breath. Right. Because yeah, yeah. we were fighting. Right. So, if you have not ordered it, it yeah. is definitely worth it. <laughs> it is. That sounds very much worth yeah. it. Yeah. And I believe it. I mean, I know Jeannie Marie is in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to say Chrissy Stevens. I mean, you got a lot of hot names in there. Yeah. So. All right. It's so worth watching. I want to take a moment and, and compare these films for a second. Because Oil, you were invited to be part of and, and wrestle. Yeah. And uh, Lesbian Bush Worship, you wrote and directed so in I terms two of scenes of that and you were in it so in terms of making the films um lesbian bush uh worship you said you wrote it so there yes. was there a script uh yeah and there is a plot yes same with this one as well okay this one's a fetish one and that one's kind of weird okay well there's an anal play in that one okay and some bondage well it's it's fetish yeah you would assume that I, th I think. Well, I would assume that. Carmen Calloway is out of the industry, but she was my notable favorite pussy muncher. She was in almost every scene of mine for a while. Okay. She was my my little crush for a little bit there. And you directed that one as well. Yes. Directed, wrote it, and I'm in two scenes. Every Philly um, movie that I write, they put me in two scenes, so it's kind of like a deal. Yeah. Do you do you think it's easier to direct because you have performed? Yes. And have you worked with uh, directors who you think like if you'd performed, you'd know you yes. would know that this is not cool or how you should do it or whatever. Yeah. Um, how is it being a female director in what is, I guess, seen as a male dominated world? I don't know if it's necessarily a male dominated world. Uh, it used to be. It totally used to be. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say that being one of the female directors, because I I definitely feel like there's one other female director that I think is far beyond me mm -hmm. as far as I definitely have some more learning to do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without my team mm -hmm. and my other uh, half actually that helps me hugely is uh, Andre Madness who helps me uh, immensely. Yeah, I mean, being a female director in this huge industry, it is definitely male dominated. And I think it, even when I went on another radio show, they kind of they they mocked me a little bit being a female director. I mean, I think you have to win an award and you have to be noted like mason is huge mm -hmm. she's won so many awards and i think she definitely sets a goal and i think you know her work is just beautiful mm -hmm. and she's something for me to aspire to want to be yeah. and another one is stormy daniels mm -hmm. i've worked for her now and she is just so driven she works so hard to write her her scenes yeah. and she puts so much behind it i mean and and to be able to be in her movies uh i was just in passions and then girls night i mean she just 
once again, these are just, it, it was an honor to be able to do them. Yeah. But yeah, there are so many female directors out there that are just making it, yeah. <laughs> it's making it easier for all of us to be able to be noticed. Yeah. So, it's so wonderful. It's not just a male dominated industry anymore. That's that's wonderful. So, um, do you have a group of women that you prefer to work with aside from your your crushes? I do, I do actually. Like I said, she's out of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, these are just a number of girls that I've used yeah. um, a couple of times mm -hmm. in my movies. Um, there's Carly Montana. Mm -hmm. um, I have like a list actually and there's even new girls uh that uh when i see them and they're brand new mm -hmm. i love to give them a shot uh carly montana is just one of them georgia jones just came back so i just worked with her for carly's movie definitely on my work list yeah because uh these are all also um past cam smith girls um that i used to be on his old uh, roster when I started. Mm -hmm. So anyone that is a past Cam Smith girl is a go for me. <laughs> awesome. Um, any of the uh, Spiegler girls go for me. Dana D. Armand, I love working with her. Uh, Casey Colvart, love working for working with her. Um, Cassie Cassidy Klein is like up here. <laughs> on my work list. I've worked with her, I think, twice now. Love working with her. We did a Kiss Me Girl and Evil Angel. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally recommend. It is in editing, I think, I know. Oh, wait. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. You have to go pick up Fetish Fanatic 16. Please, everybody. Cassidy <laughs> Klein and I spit in each other's mouths and we bathe in lemonade okay. in a pool. Please go pick up your Evil Angel copy and check it out. <laughs> I didn't have any copies, so I would have brought it. Because <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. And um, another one that I love working with, especially if I'm gonna get domed, Sin Sage. Mm -hmm. Again, go pick up your Fetish Fanatic 15 and watch me get domed. First ever. Okay. And that is actually my first ever being beat up, domed, everything. First ever out the gate. So, yeah. go pick it up. <laughs> watch me get it. <laughs> All right, before we go, I wanna find out what is your or the biggest misconception in your opinion about the adult industry that you want to set straight right here and now or that you wish someone would have told you when you started um there's a number of misconceptions i think um one for the talent and mm -hmm. one for civilians okay i'm gonna say for the talent that you can basically have sex with whoever you want and you're not gonna get you know, an STD. Mm -hmm. I feel like they come into this industry and they have this God complex. Yeah. Like, okay, mainly the 18 year olds and the 19 year olds. Yeah. They come in, they have this God complex, like they're not gonna get anything and they're untouchable. And they're normally the ones that end up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without me saying it. Uh -huh. um, and they're the ones that generally give us like the bad rep yeah. I mean, I wish that they would understand that we have a testing regulation for a reason. Mm -hmm. And just keep your hot pocket in your pants. Yeah. And your your hot dog in your <laughs> pants. So like, if you're gonna get horny, fuck each other. Mm -hmm. Stop going outside and fucking everything that walks. And think about us, not just yourself. Yeah. When you go home, wear protection and this whole thing about gloating about it on your social media we don't want to see that and going on set and gloating about it like how you just fucked some rock band and i am quoting a talent a young talent that <laughs> is making a mistake currently you know think about it yeah. wear protection because you don't have a god complex mm -hmm. and you can get kicked out of this industry and they can quit you and 
if you're a good talent, like you have the potential to create a career here and just think about it. Don't just think about us, but think about your life. Like you can get something and mm -hmm. we don't want it. Yeah. Like some of us have been in here for the long haul mm -hmm. and we are just kind of adding in. All, I mean, we were just talking about recently a couple of talents in me, like how many new girls are like coming into the industry. Like there's a windfall of a yeah. lot of new girls. Like just think, just think before right. you unzip. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Safe sex. <laughs> and you're, you're uh, and for the civilians? It was kind of the same thing that they said at AVN. And I kind of get this from some of my fans too. Like they kind of assume that we are dirty. And, you know, I do think that that's in part of what I just mentioned before, right. you know, the new mm -hmm. things that are happening, but knock on glass. Um, <laughs> I've been in eight years and I've never had anything. Mm -hmm. Like I have eight consecutive years of testing. Yeah. And I'm really happy that we're getting tested for hepatitis now. Like it makes me feel a lot safer. Mm -hmm. But I really resent that, you know, they put these things out in their paper that, you know, the stuff about adult films and right. adult performers. And there are people that have been in this industry for a long time and yeah. It, it's really not our fault if, you know, a performer gets something because a performer that was careless, mm -hmm. like I just mentioned, <laughs> was fooling around and yeah. someone, you know, with a family or someone, you yeah. know, that is doing the right thing is subjected to that. I think yeah. that's wrong. I think that the, the civilians should be a little more open minded because honestly, when was the last time normal civilians got tested? Right. I mean, yeah. I'm really honestly more scared. I even said it the other day to my own sister. When was the last time she got tested? If she bled on my table, I'd be like, ah, fuck <laughs> you, dude. Call your friends. I'm not helping you. Like, no offense. And that's my own sister. Yeah. I don't know when the last time she had an HIV test or anything. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not helping my own sister. That's fucked up. I gotta have a hazmat suit on to help my own sister and she's a civilian. Yeah. Like, I think that they should just get their information a yeah. little better. And another thing, and this is really huge and I don't know if this is something that could be added into, but I think agents should have a book to help talents if an HIV outbreak should mm -hmm. ever happen again. I don't think agents should get the right to just write off someone. I think it's wrong. Yeah, They're like our family and they take on the responsibility to take us in. Like mm -hmm. we're basically a bunch of kids in a playpen and they're able to book us yeah. and get us money and have us work. But if something were to happen again, Mm -hmm. Like a Cameron Bay situation. That poor girl was lit on fire. I mean, on Twitter, everywhere. Yeah. I just think, you know, they should have a manual that is presented to every single talent. Yeah. That says, hey, we're going to be here and we're going to help make sure that you get the help you need. And we're going to make sure that you're settled in. And we're going to take your phone calls for as long as you need because were the family members that you guys knew yeah. for however long they were there, they were, you know, so-and-so's agent. Mm -hmm. I think we should have more of a support system Yeah. as far as the industry. I think it's needed. Spiegler does that really well for his, his girls. Mm -hmm. And ATM, you know, my agency, I think they're doing really good at that. Yeah. You know, they take our calls and they're really doing a good job right now. So awesome. I think we should just start doing manuals and handing them out to the <laughs> girls, talking about, you know, what you can get from the industry, how you can, you know, mm -hmm. basically if you need therapy, you should get it. Right. Because <laughs> some of the girls do. And I think civilians, before they start talking shit to us on Twitter, look up your information. 
Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, why don't you let people know if they aren't already following you on Twitter and everywhere and MySpace, where can they? I don't have a MySpace anymore. <laughs> where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at Sasha Hart. Awesome. And uh, my wish list, I think I just tweeted. And if you buy me anything on my wish list, I will send you a DVD signed or whatever you want actually yeah. um i can do a video as well awesome. and or a phone call <laughs> wow awesome yeah. and where can people check out lesbian bush worship where can they get it you can actually buy it from me right now awesome <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you want to, make sure you've subscribed to Adult Films Exposed on iTunes, on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter at AFXPOSED, AFXPOSED. Let us know who you want to see here next using the hashtag AFXNEXT. I'm your host, Yael Teagle. You can find me on Twitter at Yael Teagle, Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. We will see you with another episode in two weeks. Bye. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.